That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I like that. I like the sound of that. I like the pre the shincha. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I cannot see anything else, but that's all right. It's all right. As the old Kirushim would say as well in my nefesh. You're not here for some kind of high, pervaleted type teachings. We're here to understand the seal of you among his nation, Israel. There is nothing more valid and more important than that. It's one thing, my Zachin Shimri, that the true messengers of Yah, they never speak like the Pharisaic trained mindset. Yokahan the Immerser, he came preaching, repent of your wicked ways, you vile. You must be immersed into the power of this Torah. And there comes one after him that he was a witness to. He said, you're wicked. And you better make sure for the Melchutz of Yah. He says, it is at Yad, it is at hand. They did not teach like the Pharisaic order with their minutia and their little small details to matter. They spoke with authoritative power. We greet you all, our friends and our listeners, especially our enemies, because Yah says, if your enemy is hungry, feed the beast. Let your enemy dine at the table. Let them consume death and destruction upon them. I received an email from one that says, Help, Riach David Israel. I need help. My response was, Here is where your help lies. That you obey what you hear. You keep what Yah commands you and do it as he instructs you. There is where your help lies. Any other way, you have no help. And so this is a generation that wants someone to, to cater to their little ears and you spend two or three hours talking about nothing. I told them, get your damn heart right. There is no time for your high pervily, your wicked actions and activities. Get your damn heart right. And you do that by listening. What? To this simple messenger of Yah. That's how you get it right. So that was my response to him. Hallelujah. I received an email from an elderly man, Ach, pure 66 years old. And said, I've been raised in Christendom all my life. And for some reason, Yah allowed my ears and my eyes to venture to Yahweh's sword. And what a blessing it has been. What a great strength it has garnered in my life and how... It has brought me out of the depths of this wicked, false activities that were damning my soul into hell, my nefesh. And then he goes on and to brach us for our faithfulness. So you act, you stay strong and declare the Torah, the truth of Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no time for pretense, no time for jocularity. And sitting and talking about those things that do not produce a damn thing. I said to one the other day, I, I don't like to sit and talk because in all of the talking that Yoshua did among them, did it produce anything? 
he sat in the bed and he talked with an authority of the Torah. I don't have time to waste for that. Every second that my mind is not attending to the things of Yah, I'm out or planning and scheduling those things that if he grants me breath, that I may go forth in the gardens and things that must be done constantly. And I'm almost in a hurry, my Zakin. I must get certain things done during the course of the day that my nefesh is satisfied. If I don't, I don't feel the fulfillment that I've wasted Yah's time doing nothing. And I can't operate that way. So my mind is constantly always abiding in those things that pertain to Yisra'ya. I said to Ak Yabasadak, I said, do you understand why I'm doing this? If it's no more than two or three of you families here, you don't have to worry about garden one or any garden. I say there shall be enough fruit and a greenhouse that you can grow all year long and you will have more than enough. It will not take a lot to attend to. As I said to the old man, I say, what a great blessing. I saw the old freezer being thrown into the pit. It was stinking, full of stench. So I retrieved that and let it dry out for a couple weeks, a few weeks. And so the stench had, had evaporated from that. And so I set it up as a place to grow herbs. And I was thinking, that's a lot of dirt to put in that. So I cut me a 55-gallon barrel in half. Dropped it down about 18 inches. And you have the depths that you can grow anything. Well, I said to the old man, so that the hope will not have to bend their backs, they can come. And we're getting older. So it doesn't hurt for us not to have to bend our backs. I don't mind that. And he says to me, there are times we need to bend our backs a little. I said, but this time, we won't do it. So I said to Yahweh Sadak, do you all find these? He said, we turn them down all the time. Don't turn another one down. I need at least 30 or 40 of them. Because you can grow enough food in that. That will supply you, Yisra'ya. So I'm looking, and all I do, for you few young ones, if nothing else, when my time ceases from here, then I can lay a groundwork that you can follow that. You can eat and be healthy. It will be more than enough, and you don't have to break your back because uh, it is hard work. Let no one tell you that gardening and farming is not hard work. You will go by the vineyard of one that is lazy, you will see weeds and all of that growing in his vineyard. You see that in the fruit of his life. You went by the vineyard of one that is wise, you see that it is pruned. And everything we do, the way we live, how we dress, our actions, it represents the kingdom. And I don't care where we go, how we respond. There is something true about Yisrael. Your people cannot identify it. But they know that there is something different. That we don't act like the world. My ruach is not like the world. You both know I'm telling you. That I may empower my young ach that they will go in the same strength. When I go to a place, I take command. I don't care where it is. I was in the store. I'm going to preach here. I want to pray for my Ach Mikaya. Two places when I went out on Thursday. And of course, I was dressed in my flea market attire. We went in one place. And so the woman that was serving us, the cashier, I'm aware of how she's looking at me, and I'm telling you, it was just not a look. I want to show you something. She would not take her eyes. I felt very uncomfortable, like, don't look at me, woman. I didn't want to say anything. And so my issue is watching this woman. She's watching her. She will not move her eyes. I knew what this wicked, vile spirit of darkness, she didn't know. And so she got so rude that she would not even put 
what I was buying in bags. You understand? So she says, let me make sure that this check. Well, I, my checks in Walmart, uh, the only thing we do is I don't even fill them out because uh, they have the system in place. I didn't respond. I said, this heifer. I knew what it was. So she asked my issue question. How was your Thanksgiving? You see, I would have responded a little different, but my issue says to her, I don't keep Thanksgiving. I would have said mine was just like yours, just like you worked on Thanksgiving, I worked. How about that? See, I'm a little wiser than her, a little more abreast of things, that are a lot more sharper. And so she disregarded what she said, so she, she looks at me. What about you? This Jezebel, that's all she was. I knew what was in the wicked one's heart. And so she says to my Ishaw, you look pretty or you dress so pretty. She knew that that was my wife. This is a wicked world. I will show you how the enemy operates. And so by the same token, we go to another place, a young Gentile, a young Caucasian, a young man. I always like to bag my stuff because I know how neat I want it and how I want it in my bag. So he looks at my Isha and I, very gleeful expression. He says, your style is so unique. What style? Hell, I got on jeans from the flea market. He said, you all are just so, he didn't understand what he was saying. He said, you're just, it's just so unique and so different. Why am I saying that? Because we as a nation, Yah did not make us to be the butthole, but he made us to be the head. And any time we go anywhere, then we are recognized as a royal people. People may not understand how to express it. I know that you are a child like mine. You don't get the gist of it. I know that you that are immature and you're full of your jealousy. You don't. You're boasting on you. Don't be a silly boy. I'm trying to show you the evidence that we as a nation, I do not give a damn if it's in the midst of politicians. Mr. Barack Hussein Obama makes me no difference at all. We should personify the excellence. We that are men, we should personify the power of an ish. The strength of a man, the masculinity. Our presence should pronounce who we are. And that's just the truth. You can reject it all you want to. But I will not allow you in your weaknesses and your immaturity to cause me to evade that position. As a young lad, I understood that. And that's just the truth, Yisraya. We are a nation. We are a peculiar. We are a sohul, sohul. Do you understand that? We are a sohul, 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 sohul. We're not like the norm of the nations. We're not like the nations. We are a precious, special people to you. We are the ambassadors of Almighty Yahweh. And when we go, they shall know that we are the royal kingdom, Yisraya. Our actions, our activities ought not to emulate anything of the world. And that's a fact. You know the way I used to walk. I don't walk no more since the power of the Ruach. Came upon me, no, I don't. My talk, I used to talk. I don't talk no more since Yeshua took control of my mind. Oh, you know the way I used to go. Here, there, and everywhere. I don't go no more because... Yah is real to me. Oh, I'm looking for the home of Yah. And it won't be very 
Real long. I like that. I can't sing, but I like that. Read my email, Daphna, get up. We're so plastic. We're so phony. This is me. What you see is me. And I will not alter that for a superficial, unconscious mind of heathenistic proportion to abide in your fellowship, you will go to hell. I don't give a damn who you are. Makes no difference. That's why men, please, don't tell me you love me. Because your love for me is going to be tested. That's why when men come to tell me I love you, I stand by you, I throw that out because I know those are the ones that will. They'll forsake me eventually. Because they don't have the tenacity, they don't want it. You know, it's one thing about iron, it's sharp and iron. If you're skilled, you want someone that is sharp as you. I do. Greetings to you all that have joined us via the live visual broadcast and also the audio. We greet you all in the most prominent, precious name granted unto Yisrael, the name of Yoshua Hamashiach. We're glad that we're able to come into your bed, your heart, as we are in fellowship here in Yerushalayim. We come to hear the shalom of Yah, Yoshua Hamashiach. What a great blessing that Yah grants unto us the Shabbaton, a time of rest, a time to fulfill and express all of his mitzvah with no hindrance. We don't have to work. We don't have to cook. We don't have to plow the field. We don't have to look at the oxen or the asses. We just come to rest in the assurance of Torah in Yeshua. We're not burdened down. We're not heavily written with sin. If you are, then you disavow the commands of Yah. So we greet you all wherever you are, you that have joined us, our precious friend and neighbor there in Los Angeles, California, our Ach Davis, we greet you, our Ach, our Ach. You are a hope there in Jacksonville, Florida, also in Texas, and all of our friends, our Achotz, Mariana, your faithfulness, over the many years, we appreciate that, my hope. And all of you are Ima Miriam. And everyone that have joined us, even though those that have fallen off, there are always those that fall aside. I understand. Because uh, I'm not an easy man to bear with. Was your sure easy? He says, uh, I'm praying for my people. And damn the world. I pray for them that you have given unto me. I pray not for the world. We are so accustomed to people not being sincere. And their faithfulness is not sincere. So when one comes along uh, that do not follow the paradigm of what we are accustomed to. We tend to think that he is so wrong. He doesn't love you he has no sincere motive. He's about money. Well, if I was about money, I certainly could draw a crowd bigger than this and the few that are listening on the live stream. I know how to do it, Israel. I have the physical locum. I have the intellectual ability to extrapolate. I can sermonize with the best of them. I can detail out things in such a way that the best of them would be baffled. I can speak to any genre of people or any segment or society. I know how to. I can perform the kind of mannerism uh, that will allure the people into this uh, sensual soothing uh, that I blind them all. I know how to do it. But my life is greater than that. I'd rather die a naked man than to die in the palatial palate of the riches. I don't want that, Yisra'ya. 
I'd rather die digging in the field than to die in a marble top floor with a bed that cost me $25,000. I'd rather die in my sodded rags that are mammy me than in a $5,000 Italian suit. I'd rather. I have one goal in life. One, let me die in your shoe and let the works, the old folks didn't understand that, but let the mitzvah, the power of his Torah, let that speak for me. I don't want nothing else to speak for me, but that is Rayam. I'm not looking for any accolades of grandeur. I don't like that. Never have. And never allow people to do that to me. I don't want you telling me you love me because your love is polluted. I don't want that. I don't want you telling me you care for me. We will see in due time. I said to the little one this morning, she says to my issue, I love Reak, I like him because he gives us candy. So I say to her, is that the only reason you care for me? She says, yes. I said, are you sure? She said, mm-hmm. No other reason. I said, I would have hoped that you would care for me beyond that reason. But that's all right. I understand her genuineness and her honesty because what the candy speaks of, uh, it speaks in a greater volume. There's a sweetness to him. There's a kindness. There's a concern because he always makes sure we have candy. And so when we get out of school and we want uh, a lollipop, we can go to his office and there it is. So what she said spoke more than the volume. Because she locked me because I give her candy. It is of greater essence than that, Mr. Raya. It has a greater volume than that. It speaks of what she determines, what is precious and sweet because she likes candy. And there's a candy man that will make sure he satisfies my juvenile palate. That's all right. I have no compunction with that at all. Hallelujah. You see, things like that makes me think. I want to, Arach Mikaya. Yah grants you his mercies, his chassid. Now I want him to grant you his nacham, his great special favor that he pities you above all men this day. Hallelujah. In your home. I want to begin and continue in the teaching that it is all part of this teaching. No man will be able to buy or to sell. We must understand Torah Yisrael. We must understand the great depths. As I was looking at Torah this morning, I said, yeah, oh, I would love to teach that. That men have time. You that especially do not have a laborious activity in your day. That you should have messages beyond the concept of the wisdom of man to comprehend. If a man has four or five hours a day where he can sit in the Torah of Yah, he can teach on the very refined depths of Yah's Torah. I wish I had that. Because I see things in the book that is beyond our ability to comprehend. Even I don't even comprehend it. But it takes a labor to understand what Yah is saying. Out of the midst of this crop, vile earth, we see the rising of this Nahash. It is a spirit that bewitches one's mind. Through the subtlety of shekhar, of lying to oneself. You ever lied to yourself and convinced you? Sure we have. That is the power of Nahash. And out of the power of that kingdom construct uh, shall arise the mind of sin. I want to inject 
There's something there. Our concept, I don't care how I've heard men teach, and I will get to the logistics of that. But Shaul writes in Thessalonica, Ya Allah, it is all a conscript taught out of the prism of this vile whore of Christendom. They have not examined every word carefully. They have not examined the Torah carefully. And so they have read books. They have read the opinion of others. And they all stay to the same line. It's greater than that. And as I teach this uh, in the next two or three Shabbats, I will show you, Yisraya, there shall be one that is revealed. And he is the man of sin. From that mind comes the kingdom of uh, Nahash. The day uh, that you defy Yah. The day that you denounce the power of his authority. Uh, the day that you say to him, I will not be forbidden by you. It is the day that you will understand. You will know what is tav and rath. What is excellent and what is out of the gates of hell that, uh, that constitutes some of the most evil, wicked desires and passions. The day you defy Yah, the day that you transgress the mitzvah of Yah, his instructions to wisdom, his knowledge that leads to wisdom, uh, that we may yada, we may know, and when one yada, it is a process uh, of learning, lamad, learning the concepts to understand uh, and to experience. We are people that loves this instantaneous microwave process. And so that's what these false Pharisees are giving the people. They have heard it one time and so it gives them uh, some spirit of adulation and jubilation. Well, I knew what he said. I understood that. That's the response of most people today. Oh, I knew that. Oh, I have been studying that. You have not been studying that. Because when a student studies one that he perceive uh, that has a more proficient knowledge of life, uh, then that one begins to walk like that one, like his son will study his mannerism uh, and he will walk like his avatar. He will talk like him. His actions will be that way. We have not studied. Yeah. So we don't walk like him. We don't walk like Yahshua HaMashiach. And there's an impediment there. I will read that. But the spirit of Nahash, it bewitches us. It will make us lie to one another and say, uh, I'm your friend. And you know that you're not the friend. Yoshua did not lie to us. He said, I call you no more abbot, servants. But I call you re'ah, friends. Those that are beloved of my bosom. Because the abbot knows not what his master does. But I reveal not only the qualitative, but the quantitative knowledge of Torah unto you. That's what we need, Yisrael. Yeah. You're no more my abbot, but you're my friend. What a friend we have. You're yeah. Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm glad of that. Yerusha Rak says, if a man finds one friend, in this life, he's done well. Just one. I use the word friend as an apparition. I say, my friend. I always say that to people. They don't understand that. My friend. I know what I'm saying. Can I proceed a little? I want to identify us because the question, why is it that the tribe of Dan, the judge, is not written in Giliana 7. He's not mentioned. Why is it? He's been placed with Yosef, Ephraim. Why is that? Has he lost his inheritance? Not so. It was something that was missing. I will show you what has transpired. I will show you what has been brought forth out of Dan. And what shall come forth? Out of him. It's in the book. 
It's in this book. And people struggle with that. Even as a young ignorant man, I recall as y'all began to deal with me in 77, 78 more profoundly, that I've never took the broad idea of the concept of how this man of sin shall be revealed, who shall it be. I always knew that everything pertained unto Yisra'ya, and everything shall come out of Yisra'ya. The sin uh, came out of Yisra'ya. The rebelliousness against Yah, it came from among the people, uh, his nation. Did it not? But I want to identify where we are, first of all, in the book of Yeremiah. Are you the people of Yah? And so we know that there is a tremendous cataclysmic mayhem that is approaching us. This nation and the nations of the world, it is of the very mindset of Hashatan. Everywhere they go, they steal, they rob, they destroy, they destroy the air, they destroy the ocean, they destroy the grounds, they poison and pollute everything. They go as a pretense to tell people, I'm coming to help you. Uh, and they rob them of their natural ores, of the essence of their lives. Uh, they bring them down to servitude unto them. Uh, we saw what we call the, the, the rise of the Arabic Spring. You all remember that? Uh, as Libya and Egypt uh, and all these nations rose up crying, they want democracy. And those men had been decapitated and destroyed. They were their leaders. Uh, and it came from from one of the springs uh, that we call Twitter and Facebook and the lies of rich billionaires uh, that are vile children of hell. Now all of a sudden we see uh, whereby none of these nations have any power at all now. We see the rise of that uh, superficial people in the land uh, that we call Yisra'ya as they rise up to, to trap out, to trot down uh, and to overthrow anything uh, that they call Arabic. So Mr. Murrah, he had no power to speak the other day uh, because there is no life to the Arabic spring. Uh, it was a false spring. It was a stinking uh, spring. Uh, it was a corrupt spring. Uh, it was a vile spring. Uh, show me the power of Libya now. Show me the mainstay of the strength of Egypt now. They have none. Look at Syria. It's brought down to desolate and dust. And now all of a sudden we see this serpent's head rise up out of that land. And began to destroy and to kill. And we are so damn ignorant. We pray for the shalom of Yerushalayim. The city that has been trodden down. We pray as Shaul says. My prayer is that whole Yisra'ya. That they all might be your shach. They may be delivered. That's what he prays. My prayer is for all Yisrael to be your shock, to be saved. That's my prayer, that Yah will save his people. So is Dan lost? In no way is he lost. I will prove it in the Torah. But let me read this in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22. Are we the people of Yah? So let me identify us. Jeremiah chapter 4, 22. Your says in the possessive for my people, they are evil, they are evil, they are foolish people. And when you find a foolish individual, it is one that despises a sane wisdom. What a man speaks with wisdom, they despise it. They despise it. That is an evil, that is a foolish man or a woman, that is a foolish child. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 4.22. He says, for my people, they are foolish. They are the ones that despise the wisdom of Yah and don't tell them their sins because uh, that is what Evel is. That is what the foolishness of man is. Uh, it will mock you uh, when they are found guilty. It will mock you. They will mock you. They will criticize you, Yisra'ya. He said, for they have not Yada, they have not learned to know me. We are people that have not learned to know Yah. Our concept of Yah is through the prism of a damn wicked God. Through a vile thing called Jesus Christ. Through our traditions that may void. Did not all of our traditions make void the word of Yah? Your church of God in Christ, your Baptist, your Pentecostal. All of our religious activity made void the Torah of Yah. That's what it did. We have not, Yada, we have not learned to understand the ways of Yah. 
And everyone today preaches or teaches from the concept of how it has been laid in them. They have learned from a dirty whore that despises Yah. You must eradicate yourself of all of that. That's why everyone today, uh, no one can tell them anything. They know everything everyone else knows. Uh, and yet they have not labored uh, in the power of Torah to understand. My people, he said, uh, that includes us, each of you. He said, they have not known me. He said, they are sakal, they are saltish. They are people that act foolish. They are silly people, they are immature people, they are stupid people, um, and not only that, he said they are kasal, kasal, he said they are fat, that's what kasal is, that's what shakal is, it comes from the root of kasal, when you find fat people gathered, don't they act silly as hell, sure they do, that shouldn't offend anyone, you're fat, then do what it takes not to be fat. This is what we need to understand. He said they're silly people. They're fat in the physical state. They're fat in their sin. They're fat in their corruption. I didn't write this. This is what Yah put down. He said they're silly. They're stupid. They're immature. They're fat. He said they are softest children. He said, do we have understanding? He said they have no being. They have no discernment. They have no understanding. They have no discernment. They have no insight at all. They have no insight to the Torah of Yah. They have no wisdom of the Torah of Yah. But yet they all exalt themselves as though they do. You cannot spend all damn day watching television or on the damn YouTube and think it's going to grant unto your knowledge of Yah. What a man labors, uh, if you don't understand what labor is, come here one day and work with me. I'll show you what labor is. I will show you what labor is. I will show you the intensity of labor. And the way I work is the way I labor in the Torah. If you're slothful in your laboring, that's the way you labor in Torah. If you don't give a damn about your house, Ima, that's the way you labor in Torah. If your house is uh, disorganized, it is unclean. Uh, it is your mind that is unclean. No, I don't give a damn if you don't love me. You should have the fragrance of the smell of your sure Hamashiach all the time. It should pulse, pulsate in your home. He said they have no discernment. They have no being. They have no insight. We are a generation of people. We have no insight. Eliah was the only one says. Uh, he said there is not another one like me. He said, you have prophets of Baal or of the Lord, and many still have the Lord's spirit in them. They want to Lord everything. They want to be the masters of everything. I don't want to be the master of everything. Because when you're master of everything, come woes and agonies and anxieties, Yisrael. I don't want to be the master of everything. I don't want to know how to do everything. I don't want that, Yisrael. I just want to know how to do one thing. And that is to walk in your Torah, to walk in his truth. That's all. Yes. Hear this, Yisrael. They have no understanding. He said, they are wise. We are wise to do evil. He said, but to, be, to do yatab. What does that mean, to do right? To do yatab. You understand? That's why we need the search. He says, to, to do yatab. We don't know how to. What is to do yatab? We say to do right, don't we? But he says, to know how to rejoice. And to be glad. And to show the fervency of my power of excitement. He said they don't know how to do that. We don't know how to get excited for Yah. We are not excited for Yah. Our matterism we are learned from the filthy whore. The way we dance we have learned from the filthy whore. Our matterism at Yah's house we have learned from a damn filthy slot. I said to what I watch every year, I will go on YouTube because they download it there. And take a few minutes and look at what they call the church of God, their convocation. And you ought to see the filth, the women, the effeminate men, the homosexuality. You can just see it. And all of them act alike. All of them, they, 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 they fall prostate alike. All of them, same spirit. It's not of y'all. It's not of y'all. 
He said, you don't know how to do right. You need to learn how to do your tab. You need to learn how to be joyous. You need to learn how to delight in the truth of Yah. When the last time we delighted. So we hear the power of Yah's truth. It's not going to make us delight and rejoice in the power of Yah's truth. He said, that is what Yah Tab is. We have not learned how to be happy. We have not learned how to be satisfied. We have not learned how to rejoice in Yahshua. We have not learned how to give the offerings of Torah unto Yah. We have not learned that. When Yah brought a man or a woman with something that is dynamic and excited, then they, then they will show you that. You watch the ball players when someone scores a basket when the game is tight uh, and how they give chest bumps uh, and how they jump. I'm talking about grown men. Yeah. Yeah. Yet we have not learned how to do right, the Yatab, uh, to rejoice in Yeshua HaMashiach. That's why the door of Nahash, uh, it is the spirit of Nahash. We have deceived ourselves in our own self righteous of thinking yeah. that we are right. We're doing things that are right before Yah, and you're not doing what's right before Yah. Because we have learned how to do Ra, we have learned how to do evil, we have learned how to cause our minds to respond in an evil way, that is Nahash. And any time a mind rejects Yah and disobeys Yah, it is the mind of Nahash. It is the mind of sin revealing himself. It is the nature of one's not only love, but their labor, their labor, their mind, their spirit that rises up against Almighty Yahweh. We have learned to do evil well. We have learned the process of evil. But to do yatab, we have not learned. We have not learned to rejoice. We have not learned to be happy in your Yeshua. We have not learned to rejoice because we have the, uh, the remnants of this filthy whore in us. Uh, this religious spirit, uh, this self-righteous spirit uh, that we think is because of our exterior, our outward appearance. No, I want see people to see something in me that they can't express, uh, nor can they describe. That's the power of a man. That's the strength of a man. They look at you and they can't even express what's that. Who is this man? Where does he come from? We have learned to do evil but to do right. We have no knowledge. We have no yada. We have not learned to do right, Yisrael. We have not learned to walk in the Torah of Yah because we're ignorant. He calls us Sochan. He calls us Satish. And we must identify ourselves within the truth of Yah's Torah. He's going to save only one house. And that's Yisrael. I'm reading this to show you in order when we get to the very nature of Dan, you'll understand. Turn quickly to the writings of Shaul, Abonimus, even the greetings of historians. Historians do not know, but we ascribe it to Shaul. Romeya, Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Romans, Romeya 11, 25. This is what Shaul says. He said, for I would not, my desire, my passion, for you, Yisrael, light, ak. Romans eleven twenty-five. He said that you should be, that you should be ignorant. I would it be my Yisraelite uh, that you would be nacha, that you would misconstrue, that you would be void of the knowledge of the Torah of Yah. I would it be my desire is that you would not be ignorant of the mysterious secrets of those things that are hidden from the prudent and the wise, and Yah has revealed them unto babes. You see the very wise uh, collective effort of the theologians and yet they miss the mark every time yesterday he takes a simple babe he takes one that is not worth a damn and reveal the wise counsel uh, unto them. That's why Yah says, uh, I take from among you, Yisrael, Yah, that which is not highly respected, uh, that has nothing uh, to garner your regard for, and I raise up a messenger among you. For I shall raise up a prophet among uh, your brethren, among your people. You know the sin of your people. You know the wickedness. Uh, I'm not going to bring a stranger. I'm going to bring one that is among you. 
you. I'm going to raise them up. And when you see the hand and my hand, then that's Zakin the rules. Well, he's worthy of double honor, Yisraya, because you will know that I've raised him up. And he doesn't operate of his own accord and his own strength because he has no strength. None. I would for all Yisraya. Yisraya light ak. He said that you will not be ignorant of the things of Yom, the coming of Yahshua. He said, lest you be wise in your own pride and your own conceit, that you think you're wise. It's one thing about the wise counsel of any man. It balances his life. And when our lives are not balanced, we're not wise. And you will know a man is balanced by his physicality. You will know that. You will know that everything about that man is balanced. His eating, his preference, his lifestyle, his strength, his health. Beloved, I would above all things that thou mayest prosper. You may shahath and be in tav rafa health. Even as your nefesh, the light of the power of Yahshua shine forth in you. So that's the strength of an ish. It is his physicality, his knowledge of Torah, and you see that emanating out of him, Yisrael. He said, in your own conceit, he said, the blindness in part, where their eyes have been shut, I've given them eyes, but they see not. What has happened unto Yisraya, he says, unto the fullness of the Goyim of the Gentiles uh, come in. Does that mean every nation? No, Yisraya, they have married into strange lands. They have taken upon the appetite of the Gentiles. They are no different than the nations. They follow after every Lord, every God, every damn strange, vile thing. They follow after that, Yisraya. He says, and the fullness of Yah's house, they have been invited into the wedding uh, and the garments must be properly adorning uh, upon each of them uh, and so there is uh, a time but Yah is coming on time uh, there's a period of time uh, that through the power of the foolishness uh, of his preaching uh, he's going to save them uh, that believes Hallelujah. and only Israel is going to believe Hallelujah. look what it says in verse 26 and so all Israel shall be Delivered. They shall be your shah. They shall be delivered. For all Yisraya shall be delivered. Is Dan a part of Yisraya? Shu sure is. All twelve tribes. I will show you the spirit of Nahash had arose. It is still in the mind of Dan. And Yah's going to break Dan, all the Danites. Listen. As it is Hatab, well, where is that written? It must be written. And it can't be written in the Brit Hadassah. It must be written in the covenant. As it is written, Thou shalt come out of Tizayon. There shall come a deliverer. And he shall turn away the wickedness of Yaakov. There shall be one that come forth out of Tizayon. That he shall cause the wickedness of Yisraya, even the wickedness of Yaakov, the supplanter, the surmiser, he shall turn away the wickedness of Yaakov. It is written in the Torah, in the book of Devarim, chapter 30, verse 3. That then, Yah, your Abba, will turn your captivity, and he will have compassion upon you, all Yisraya, Devarim 30 and 3. And he will return and gather you from all the nations. Devarim 30, 32. He's going to return and gather. Yah's going to do the gathering. You from all nations where Yah your Abba has put, where he has scattered you. Unto the fullness of the Gentiles or unto the nations, unto the Goim. And so he expressed in Debarim all the nations where I have scattered you. I'm going to bring you in because you are part of the Gentile system. Your attitude, your actions, they are heathenistic. You don't know me. You don't know the power of my will. And Yah says, I will return. I will bring you forth out of this Shabuth, this captivity of not only flesh of your mind, your will to please me, your desire and your passion to walk uh, according to my instructions. Uh, Yah says, I will gather you. Uh, I will bring you out. Uh, I will be the one that will get the job done. 
He is not leaving this to the hand of man. He's going to do this. Hallelujah. That's why we must learn Yisrael as a nation of Yah, as a people of Yah. We must learn how to do Yatab. We must learn how to do that which is right. We must learn to rejoice and sing and be happy and rejoice all the time. Not this phony, mockering thing that we pretend among each other. But it must be real and sincere. I'm laying this down to let us know he's going to save all Yisrael. Out of Yisrael has arose some of the most vile, repugnant, wicked things that one could imagine. Out of Yisrael, the spirit of Nahash. It is not the world that caused me trouble. It is not the world that makes me sin. It is those hidden things that you have hidden in your life. You have not hidden the Torah of Yah. That we said, I will hide your word in my life, that I will sin not. It is the power of Torah that keeps us from transgressing. We are liars, we are false, we are pretenders, and it's going to take you down to the depths of hell. It's best to be quiet and don't even talk so much. We must study to be quiet. That's why I don't sit down with men and talk this bull shysting. We will talk yah and let me talk. I remember going to a place and the man has become my most ferocious enemy now. And I lied to you, not my issue. She was with me. This man rises up as the leader of this place uh, was introducing all the preachers there. He wanted them all to get up and say something. This man rose up. When he came here, he came against me. This man rose up. This is what he said. I didn't say it. He said, I want to say to us all, in all of this august body, he didn't say that, but I am putting that in. This august body of teachers and preachers. He said, I want to say to us, as Shaul says, that Yah has granted unto us many teachers, Yisrael. But there are few men that know how to father the house of Yisrael. He said, and this man, Yah has sent. And what we all ought to do is be quiet and let him talk. And then there was another one that came up behind him, a beast, that lied against me. And all of my kindness we treated or entreated the damn bastard. And he says, I don't want to say anything because this man has said what we need to hear. And what we ought to do, we need to learn how to listen to someone like him and abide in what he say. And then this beast didn't listen. Not every man is great. Are you great? I am not worth a damn. But I know you're not great. Because the people will recognize greatness. Even a child will recognize greatness. You're not great. How about that? You're not great. I know that. That's why when men compare themselves with me, I know they're not worth a damn. Because I know I'm not worth a damn. I know that. I am coming home. I'm not worth a damn. I got what he got. Well, you don't have a damn thing. As a fact. Can I go a little further? In the last verse 27 of Romeo, listen to this. Hallelujah. Romeo 11, 27. Yah says, for this is my Brit, my alliance, my legion with Yisrael, Romeo 11, 27. This is my covenant to them, when I shall take away their sin. Aren't you glad of that? So is he talking to all 12 tribes, he's going to take away their sin? What has arisen out of us? Has not Nachash come up out of us? Some of the most repugnant, vile things, but Yah says he's going to take away all the sins, all the hata'ah. Hata'a is that we're guilty of the sin. All your praying has not produced anything. That's what he said. He said, I'm going to take away. I'm going to remove it. I'm glad of that. He said, I'm going to take away all the sin. So Don has sinned, but he's going to take away their sin too. He's going to save the house of Yisrael. He's going to save his people from their destructive ways. He's going to gather them from all of the Goyim, all other nations where they have been scattered. And the fullness of the Gentiles must come in. I know that there are those that construe that with nations, but Yisrael is a Gentile nation. The habits, and if you do your research in Torah, you will see that the same word when Yah express go 
Goim, which is a nation of Goim, he is talking about Israel, and it will say in many instances it referred to the nations that are outside of the Abrahamic covenant, but Abraham was a nation as well. It's only one place where it has a difference, and that is the nation of Ishmael, and I'll teach on that one day, all right? I will show you what it says about the nation of Israel. Did not y'all says that the nation of Ishmael shall be a great nation? Sure it did. But the word nation is not used as Goi, Echohim, or any of that, Yisraya. How do you know? Because I, I have done the research. I have a teaching on that. From years back, I just have never taught it. See, these are the things that men that inspire or inspire it. They ought to get into the depths of those things and teach Yisraya. that they can see the power of Yah's hands. Moving on. Hallelujah. You can't even find it today. It's just the truth. Where are the strong men? Who doesn't want to be around a strong man? I want to be around strong men. I don't like boys. I say to my Nahe, I say to Abner times, I look at him and say, Abner, how are you doing? He will respond, Poppy, I'm fine. How are you doing, Poppy? The same way. I said, how are you feeling? He said, I'm feeling tired, Poppy. How are you feeling? You're feeling all right. That's how he responds. I like that. That's why I do it. Because I know how they're going to respond. I do it that way. Abner, did you have a tough day today? Pop, I had a beautiful day. How was your day? What are you doing? You want your friend? Yeah, Poppy. Can I go get him? I like that. I do things for responses. I will say things to people. I watch how they respond. Hallelujah. I want to get a little farther today, all right? <clears throat> I want us to understand, Yisrael, the seed of Don, what is in the depths of the nature of Don, because out of Don shall arise the man of sin. We have all sinned. We've come short of the very excellence of Almighty Yah. And there's one thing you will find in Gilnayana, you will not find, this is the key thing, Yisrael, it is the word that is used, hatam, seal. And so Don has negated to seal the truth in his bosom. I will show you how and the process, all right? Can I show you that? Yeah. I want you to listen, my Achmichaya. Isn't that what Gilyana 7 deals with? The sealing of each tribe or the hatam to a fix? To make sure that this one is identified. Isn't that what it's for? So we know looking in retrospect of Torah teachings. Uh, it says uh, whatsoever man soweth that shall the man also reap also. Doesn't it say that? So he has not hatam. The legitimacy of the power of the Torah among the nation of Dan. It is one of the tribes of Yisraya that made it a bowl among the nations. Or the Gentiles or the heathens. It is in the book. That is why the question was asked, what does Don abide in the ship? Can I show you why? Let me begin this journey here. He's going to save all Don. He's going to save all of the remnant of Don. Look what it says in First Melachim. Hallelujah. First Melachim, First Kings, chapter 12, verse 25. This is so pacific. I want you to hear this. I want to move somewhat quickly. We're talking about the Arabuim, the king of the northern kingdom or the northern ten tribes of Yisrael. It says, according to the writing of Torah, First Kings, First Melachim, chapter twelve, verse twenty-five. It says, then we know that Yeroboam, from the onset of his kingdom, uh, he was steeped in every kind of idolatrous practice that one could imagine. He was a vile, wicked man. So the story or the revelation of this goes, Yeroboam, the one that the people contend, that is what his name implies. He built uh, Shechem, 
in the mount of Ephraim, and he dwelt there. And he went out from there, and he built Penuel, which is that place which faced Yah. We ought to keep our poor name before Almighty Yah. So Penuel represents the facing of Almighty Yah. It says in the next verse, And Jeroboam said in his heart, that's what he said in his love. Does it express where he began to contemplate? That is Nahash. He said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of the bear David. He said, The kingdom, if I do not do those things that will cause a great demising among the people, they will return back to the way of David when the kingdom was won. And he did not want that. If this people go up to Zabak, or to offer the offerings in the bed of Yah at Yerushalayim. That was the only place you could worship Yah. In Yerushalayim. He said, if the people go up to offer the offerings to Yerushalayim. He said, then shall the love of the people be turned against their master. Even to Roboam. He said, they're going to be turned against me. They're going to turn against me. If I permit that. If I do not do anything uh, to destroy that, we must destroy this Christian lie in our hearts. We must destroy the elements, the way they walk, don't walk that way. The way they dance, the way they prostrate, you don't do that. Yeah. It's a bunch of damn phoniness, it's not real, it's not of ya. It is convoluted, it's polluted. Those damn ways you learn from them, get that out of your damn wicked heart. It is not right, it is disgusting, it is vile, and it is wicked. Hallelujah. Yeah. Damn it, you don't walk the way they walk. You don't shout the way they shout. He said, if I don't do something that is, uh, that is of great, great power to destroy the essence of Yah, they're going to return back. They're going to return to Reboam. Look what he says. He said, he is the king of Yehudah. He said, and then they're going to kill me. And they're going to go again to Reboam. He said, the king of Yehudah. He said, they're going to turn away from me. It wasn't about Yah. It was about him. And that's the mindset. This is Nachash today. It is not about Yah. It is always about me. Look at me. Well, you just told the story about you in the beginning. You are so blatantly ignorant. You don't even understand what I was saying. You have no concept of what I was saying. I'm trying to show us the excellence of Almighty Yahweh, His power that caused us to be a segula, a people that is precious and special. And the world will identify us that way. You can have on rags, I don't give a damn. You can where I go. I stand with great authority and power. When I walk in a place, that's just me. It's not hubris, it's not pride. It's the strength of my assurance. Hallelujah. And that's the way I walk. That's the way I carry myself. Hallelujah. And I will not abate that for this damn, the foolish, stupid generation. Hallelujah. He said his people are ignorant, didn't he? Yeah. All right. Verse 28. Wherefore the Melech, the king, he took uh, Ya'atz. He began to advertise. He took counsel. Uh, and he determined, he took it, he took counsel, and then he, after he took counsel, that's what we do. We take counsel of some of the most ignorant individuals. He took counsel, he took Ya'atz, he took their advice, he took their wisdom, which wasn't worth a damn. You understand? That's sad. And what he did, this is what happens with us. As he built two golden calves, I will show you what that represents. You have a true messenger of God teaching you one thing. You have someone you've taken counsel with, and then you began to halt between two opinions. Hallelujah. That's what it is. You don't even know. It says here, whereupon he took counsel, Ya'atz. He was determined in his heart, and he asa, he fashioned, he formed, he made two ehil, or two calves of gold, and said to the people, that's what he said. Listen now, it is too much for you to go into Yerushalayim. He said, that's too far to travel. It's too far for you to come down the road and be here on time. It's too far for you to travel and to get it on time. It's too far for you to get up and to come here. That's what he said right here. Don't go to Yerushalayim. It's too far. Don't take that burden upon yourself. Listen to me. This is what he said. Hallelujah. 
He said, behold, your gods. He gave them the calves. He said, these are your gods. Oh, Yisrael, which brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. He built them too. There's a purpose behind him building too. There's a purpose. Yah says to Yisrael, why halt ye between two opinions? If Yah be Yah, let him be Yah. If be El, your Lord. What is your Lord? Your own vile spirit. You Lord, you. You Lord your ways, you're corrupt. I want to tell all you men, you that listen to you that are sitting here, the strength of a man, his sign of assurance, is his power, his walk, his might. I don't give a damn what you say. His physicality, the strength of his physicality. We've let the Lord of our damn bellies rob us. We're lazy and we're shiftless and we don't give a damn about Yah. You don't give a damn about you. How in hell you going to care about me? You can talk all you want to. But I will put you on the spot. If you don't care about you, how are you going to care about me? You're not concerned about you. You don't give a damn about nobody. And that's a fact. We must deal with the reality of it. We want someone to say, well, I understand. I know he cares. He doesn't give a damn. Because he doesn't give a damn about him. He doesn't care about him. He doesn't care about, I care about, I, I want to represent you as a, as a mighty warrior. I want to represent you as a warrior. So when I go, you're going to know you see a warrior. That's what I want to be. I want to be a warrior, a warrior. I want to die for his cause. My life is not worth a damn anyway. What is it? But miseries and walls outside of you. What else would it produce? Pains and agony. Your damn selfish ways. I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be like that, Yisraya. Above all things, I want to be sincere and true. Nothing has let me die. I say it with great bonus. Kill me. I'm not afraid to see it. Kill me. Not going to find a false, high polluted liar. Got more talk than you got game. I'd rather have game than talk. I'd rather game than gift. I don't have no gift. I have no gift. He is my gift. I have no gift. I have nothing to offer. Can I offer him gold or silver? I offer him to the... I offer him your eyes. I'm happy. I sing because I'm happy in Israel. I sing because I am Yarat. I'm free. That's why I sing. Can I move a little further? No use to reading ahead. You don't understand in no way. That's why you do that. Hallelujah. He says here in verse 29... It says, this is what this beast did. As he said, these are your gods. It says here in verse 29, and he said, one of the golden calves in Bethel, the house of Yah, in the city now, in the city of Bethel, the house of Yah, and the other he put where? Where did he put it? In Dan. Why could he get by with putting that in Dan? Because he knew the nature of Dan. The Torah must expose the very character and the characteristics of Dan. It must expose that. And in order for us to know, then we as men must labor to reveal that unto you. He put one in Bethel, the city or where the house of Yah is. Uh, is not our body the house of Yah? Yeah. Is not our body the bed of Yah? And where is Nahash? Is it not uh, in the body of Yah? Is not our golden calves? Uh, well, I, I, I'm strong and I'm mighty. You have no strength of yourself, man. Yeah. Uh, Zaki reminded us we know we are weak, so say we are strong. Uh, in, all of your, uh, in all of your juvenileness, weakness, you might as well say I'm strong. Uh, in all of your poverty, you say you're weak. Uh, say I, I'm, uh, I'm rich. He put what in the, in the house of Yah, which is Bethel. That's what Bethel is. Well, the tabernacle of Yah is uh, Is not our bodies the tabernacle of Yah? And so he has put this Nahash there. And he also put it in Dan. He put it in the city of Dan. He did not put it in the place of Levi because they own nothing. He did not put it in the land of Yosef or of Nephtali. He put it right there. And Yah is precise. Because when he came out of Misraim, there was something in Dan. There was something in that loin in the seat of Dan that was manifested. And if we don't know what it is, we don't know a damn thing. Yeah. We must learn. Yeah. You learn by listening. Yeah. There are many men can bring it forth like this. I don't care what they say. Let me show you. Are you both saying no? I know you can't do it. 
Above all things, you can do it. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Every man can lift 50 pounds. Hallelujah. Listen to this. I know what I'm teaching. Dad is not mentioned in the book. Has he been eviscerated and thrown out? No, sir. He's going to save all Israel. He is. He's going to reveal just like he did all year. He's going to reveal the nakedness of Dan, the Danites. Hallelujah. He's going to reveal that. Did he not raise the Pharaoh to get honor? So Dan, even the sixth son of Yosef, he is always mentioned down in the latter part. He doesn't, he doesn't get the accolades. Even when Yosef passed out his blessings, it was nothing. If you read the Torah, it was nothing he said to Dan, really? I'll get to that. All right. I'll show you what he said to him. It wasn't like what he said to Yosef. It wasn't what he said to, to leave it all of them. Dan, uh, and there's a reason why. There's a reason why. I know what it says. You don't. Hallelujah. So because I know I'm going to teach you and make it plain. You can write it down and go over it again and again. Listen to it. Listen to what it says. And he put one even to Dan. And then he made the Bema, he made the high places in the next verse, uh, which uh, the Bema was, uh, well, was a, a, a place that uh, rose above the heights of the hill uh, for the practice of what they call uh, satanic, idolatry, occultic, or occultic practices. So he did not put up the altar of Yah, he put up a Bema, he put up the Bema uh, place, or he, he put up the altars, and he made, look what he did now. He made the Kohim of those that were in order of the rituals or the cow worship or the calf worship. He took of the lowest of the kasa, those that from the extreme, far from what was true to Yah. Did he even follow the principles of Yah? Isn't that what's happening today in this dirty whole house? It tells those that don't have a damn bit of knowledge. You are a preacher. Oh, hey, my kaseta, God has called you. Did he not say that these are your gods? So it took the, the offcast of the people, those that were ignorant, those that had no knowledge of you, those that were blinded to the truth of you. And that's what you find today. You got blind men trying to lead someone, and they don't progress any damn where spiritually above all, they all fall into the ditch. So he made priests, he made those that would bring the offerings and the sacrifices to the gods to prevent Israel from going into Yerushalayim. And that's what these damn Beasts are doing today, preventing us from coming to the power of the truth. They're forever learning, but they're never able to come to the power of the knowledge of the Torah. That's why they sin and they lie and they walk wickedly. They defy the order of Almighty Yah. You must well say, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I like you, man. I do. I like this man. I despise him too, but I love him. I despise you, David, but I love him. I can't love you unless I love me. So I'm hard on me. I don't want to be a false ark among you. I want the young men to see me. They know what they see. They see me walking on the road. I want them to know what I want the whole to know that they see a sincere man of you. Not someone trying to fraternize and say, how are you doing, sister? Never have done that. You're boasting, I'm telling you the truth. You can't say that, but I can. I had a precious, I called me last night, and he was telling me about what all he has done. I said, doesn't mean a damn thing. You're no more wicked than your wife, what she has done. And I began to explain things to him. He said, I've never heard it like that, preacher. I can't wait to see you one day. I'm coming that way. I'm here in Texas, but I'm coming. I'm coming. He said, you're the only one who's ever said it to me that way. Because they don't know. Because they want to go around Robin Hood bonds and give you this, this, and that. And make you feel as though that uh, you're not as bad as you are. She's just as worse as you. No different. Hell, her sins were just like yours. When sin is finished, it brings forth death. That's why she can't hear truth. How about that? He took the lowest of the, those that he made for him, other people, which were not of the sons of Levi. He made those in charge of the order of Yah that were not of the tribe that Yah commanded. He made them. That's what's happening today, Yisra'ya. These filthy whole houses are producing uh, these sons of Be'el, of the Lord. 
And they're going out, they get a little knowledge of the name, and they go out trying to revive the world. And they take the same principle they learned sitting on the hoish thing they call a ministry, an effeminate soft man, that his wife could get up and rebuke and reproof. And these boys sit under that and they receive the rebuke. They go to these filthy whole houses and sit down where the woman take charge. She's on her monthly, her nidda, she's dirty. And she counts to them and she commands them. And they're saying, Amen, Amen, go on girl, and lusting like damn dogs. I don't take a word back, my Zachin. That's the way it is. And then they try to come to y'all with this same convoluted concept uh, of truth uh, and teach that the other, and they make them more the children of hell uh, than they are. And that's what they do, Yisrael. We must, this, this trash got to come out of us. We must be emptied of all of those concepts. Hallelujah. He placed the God in Dan, and he also put it in Bethel, which we are the house of Yah. And then he raised up these juveniles that were not even men of Yah. He defied the order of Yah. He would not walk in the constraints of Yah like these men are today. They're not walking in the truth of Yah. They're phony and they're false. And he went out to the outcasts, though they had no knowledge of Yasurah, and they were easily persuaded. Dumb men and silly men are easily persuaded, and they'll listen to a dumb individual. I'm so bold, I would tell people, you're just that stupid. It's ignorant. Well, you hear what I'm saying? I don't want to hear no more you're saying. It's stupid. Not all, all, all old men and gray-headed men are wise. Now, don't believe that. That's where you find most of the foolishness. Hallelujah. That's where you find it. I will. Shirak tells us, as the ark we were studying one day, it says, that, young men, be quiet among the zakhin. And let your words be few when you even speak. And if he's a true zakhin, he would tell him to shut his mouth. I do. Shut your mouth. Be quiet. I will tell a young man to shut your mouth. I will talk. You're not going to talk. There's a young man, I would listen to her grandfather. He was an old man even back then. He was in his 80s. He was old. And he would tell me the stories and they would always be the same. How he would plow. And it, it was just amazing how infatuated I was with it. I could sit for hours and listen to that man. And he would say, David, that's the way he called my name. David. And I was one of the few that would just, his grandsons didn't sit and listen to him like that. But I did. I would just love listen to the old stories about life and his wisdom, how he did things. I mean, I marvel at that. I like listening. I did. How he would take a little and how he could construct and he could do so much with that. How much money he was making, how he saved. I said, wow. And I would sit there for hours at that old man's feet and listen to him. And because of that, her grandmother of all people, she liked me, even though mother didn't. Her grandmother liked me. She said, he's going to be a fine man. That's what she said. When everybody says he's not worth a damn, and I wasn't worth a damn. Still having a, a claim to that point of being a fine man. He's going to be a fine boy. And she took a nice furniture out of her house and gave it to us. That's what the old woman did. She liked me. But Ema, ah, we won't go that way, all right. I'm glad you liked me. That's all that matters. I get tough too, don't I? All right. How about that? Parents, don't spare your children. If thou beatest him with a rod, don't spare him for his crime. You save your child from hell. From she old. So he's putting the stick on our eyes today, all right? Let me move a little farther here. So he did not choose those out of Levi because they would not capitulate. And Yeraboam uh, ordained a feast. Look, now he ordained a feast in the eighth month. Just like all these liars, like Israel, heritage, and all of them, they will not keep the more of them of Yah. 
But they will have something in the eighth, ninth month. They're going to gather in Chicago. They gather in other places. Uh, that's what they do. So he did not keep the Feast of Yah in the seventh month. Uh, he established something for the golden calves. Uh, he, he had a feast set for the eighth month of the 15th day of the month, like the feast that was in Yehuda. See, the feast that were among true Yisrael, among the tribe of Yehuda and Benjamin, they kept the ordinance of Yah. So he says, I established my own. That's why Yah says, I hate your feast days. Uh, these lies and these convoluted uh, in inspiration of hell. He have men that can tell you when the days are proper. But you think this wicked generation is going to listen? There was a woman who wrote me the other day who said, that is unclean what you said you had. And then I wrote a long letter and come to find out it wasn't even, uh, it, the, the address wasn't even right. And I want to show you, you're a very ignorant lady. You read things because of what you perceive, you understand the meaning, and you don't understand a damn thing. You're a silly woman who are laden with sin. Who are you that you think you're going to correct me? Send an offering and you're still not going to correct me. I'm not going to let you do it. No woman. Period. And then she didn't have the, she didn't even have the strength to send me an email address. I, I showed her all scripture, showed what the words mean, how they enunciate it, what it implies, what it means, the type. And then this heifer, cow, she's not a heifer. Y'all calls this nation a backslidden heifer. They don't know how to be loved. They don't want to be loved. That's what he said. You backslid. Have that. You won't let me go into your heart, your mind. That's what he calls us. Does he not? She has turned like a backslidden heifer. She doesn't want y'all to intrigue her. So he did, he in Bethel, look what he did. Now I would use sacrifices, Zachin. Sacrificing to the calves that he had made, that he had placed in Bethel, the, the priests of the high place which he had made. Just like these false institutions today, what they do, their vile, their pagan days, their unwillingness to obey the messenger of Yah. You got disputing of when the Shabbat begins now. Yah said his feast days began from the evening until the evening. That's what it says, Ereb, Ereb, at the beginning, at the evening, until the evening of the next day. And now you got those says begin in the morning. So you got all this kind of disputing. And a simple minded man will buy that. That's why Yah says, who shall I give this knowledge to? Those that are just weaned from milk, a boy two or three years just coming to the knowledge, just to name it. All of a sudden he, he got an excellent of knowledge. You are a sick jackass. It's almost like a brick mason. I, I recall uh, Mr. Preston. Uh, he said, I, when I met the man, he had been teaching 25 years. Uh, he, you know what he said to me one day? He, he didn't talk to the other men like he talked to me. Uh, when he was with me, he was careful. He didn't jive and talk with me. He jived with him. Uh, but he knew as a young man, you can't get by with me like that. Uh, I was staunch and upright. Uh, I did not participate in their folly. And they would talk about God and all that. Uh, and they were trying to lure me in that conversation. I wouldn't say a damn thing. I was just quiet. See, a wise man, he ponders. Uh, he just listened to the damn fool speaks his mind. Uh, always. So I didn't say anything. And he would get with me. He and I would sit down. We did it a few times. Uh, we would sit down and he would just talk to me just privately. I like you, man. You're different. You're not like the rest of these. And don't forget he said this to me one day. He says, I've been doing this for 25 years. And I cease not to learn every day. When I work with other Masons, I say, wow, that's how they do that? That's what he told me. Hallelujah. He didn't learn by asking questions. He learned by watching. He learned by listening to them. That's how you learn. Children don't learn by asking questions. They learn by watching and hearing. That's how they learn. And that's how he learned. He said, just watch. He said, he said I saw something the other day. I said, man, these, these fellows are tough. The way they do that. He said, I've never seen it like that. He said, I'm always like that. He said, I just watch them. When I see Masons, I don't care where I'm going. When I see them, I like to see them work. I'll stop in 10, 15 minutes. I just watch them lay bricks and blocks. I always do that. I love to see. I don't want to see no electrician. I don't want to see no carpenter. But when a Mason is laying them down, I love to see that. I love to watch that. I love to watch them work. I do. I love to watch the technique. And I said, okay, okay, I'll, that's all right. That's all right. That's how you learn. Always watching, observing, and looking. And you look to hear, and you look to understand what others do. You don't learn anything about asking questions. People do that. They want to show you they know nothing. And they're trying to prove that they know much. 
There are people that explain things to me and I say, all right, I will show you what you have. Now I can ask you questions. You're not going to be able to answer me. And I'll ask questions on the simple line of what they're talking about. And they can't answer. Well, let me go back to that. I said, no, 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 no. We can't proceed from here until you answer that. I do it all the time, Yisra'ya. For what reason? For them to shut up. And then I just say, shut your mouth. You don't have enough. You don't have enough in your armament. Hallelujah. Verse 33. So he offered upon the altar he had made unto Bethel the 15th day of the 8th month, even unto the month which he had devised, he had bought that. It is what he had invented and constructed in his own heart. And, we, and what we do, we tend to uh, bother as well, of his own heart. And he ordained a feast to the children of Yisrael, and he offered upon the altar burnt incense. Does it say that? That's what he did. He offered up things that were not right. And he began there in Bethel, the house of Yah, and also in Dan. He did not say in Asher, Yosef, God, and Abdullah. It was in Dan. It's important to understand that. Because of the sin and the wickedness that have been nurtured in the heart of Dan, it shall be revealed in the end time as the man of sin. Shall this be an individual that shall arise? The more important thing is shall what arise out of your own heart. It is in the heart that rise out of you. It is not me that make you or anyone turn away from Yah. It is your own Nahash. It is the wickedness of your heart. And see, the world has taught us, sure it's going to be, but it's not in the construct that they have taught us. He is going to be a man that rise up out of your heart. That's why Shaul speaks unto the woman. He says, dress yourself beautifully, submissive unto your husband. Abide by your rush, is your head. He says, and let not your appearing or your adorning be of the outward appearance. He said, but let it be of the hidden man of your heart. All right, that's a heart that is hidden, and we hide everything in our hearts, don't we? We hide every kind of wicked thing, every kind of vile thing, and that's where the harsh dwells in your own damn wicked heart we will speak a lie we know we're not being honest we will speak a lie to one another we know we're not being truthful we will speak a lie we know it is of the it is of the construct of a devious wicked uh, heart uh, that we know that it's not right with god that's how we talk Israel, y'all. So your door is, don't let it be of the outward appearance you're trying to impress the world. Uh, let it be of the hidden man of the heart, Yisrael. Uh, so when you go places, don't worry about how you look. Uh, I don't care if you're dirty as they come. Uh, you've got something in you that is greater. Uh, great is he that is in me than the power of the world. Uh, oh, hell can rise up against me. It doesn't mean a damn thing to me. So this man of sin, this sin nature, this heart, I will show you what it is. And I will show you the very nature of the man of sin. We must be taught this. We that stand before Yisrael, we must personify the strength, the nurture of Yah's word. That we stand as strong men, as warriors. So when we talk, men will hear whether they obey or not. With all of their gains saying they can't resist you. If I die as nothing else, I want to be able to die as a man. That's it. Standing strong. I don't want to die laying on the bed, y'all. Just let me die. Your will be done. Let me die in the bean field. I'm serious. They come out and get the old body. You'll wash me up. Clean me up. Be my nice box. Be all right. She ain't giving no problem. You can bury me when I die. You got no problem with that. I let the maggots eat my skin. And then if she dies after me, you just put it right on top of me. How about that? That's the way they did it in Yisrael. That's the truth. I'm not fearful of that. Because there is an appointment. We're going to die my bad. Don't be fearful of we go all the time. Don't spend no time worrying about that. Just get it right with you. Get right with you. War and do it now. We'll get right with you. Let the Torah show you how. Get right down on your wicked knee. Cry, y'all save me. War. Get right with you. Oh, let the Torah show you how. I... See, I always mess you up because I don't sing it like they sing it. Never have. Never learned one song. Whether it was a secular song, never have been able to learn one. Never. 
can't sing one song thoroughly. But I sing it from a place. I sing it from here. I sing it from my heart. It means something to me. And the words of y'all come alive in me. I don't like things. You got to, they have one construct. You got to sing it that way now. We're dealing with this Nahash which shall come forth out of Dan birth in him. And we as a nation of Yah, we must be careful, Yisrael, as to what things we hear, who we hear. We just don't hear everyone. I want to show you the blessing of Dan, as Yaakov speaks. He identifies him. It says in the book of Bereshit, turn quickly, the book of Genesis, in chapter 49, the book of Genesis, I want to show you the identity, the blessing, and how he is identified even by his father. As Jacob, he called all 12 sons to bless them there in Bereshit, did he not? Yes. And this is what he says to Don. Genesis 49, 16. Genesis chapter 49, 16. See, these religious whores are not going to tell you this. It says, Don, which his name imply, judge. That's what it implies. Don... He said, he shall judge, not mishpat, but he shall deen. That's what the word deen is. He shall strive. He shall strive with contention. He's not going to strive in the mastery of Torah, but he strive. And so when you find people don't want you to judge or speak to them as the matter they are, it is the spirit of the Danites. I will show you what. He said, he shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Yisrael. The next verse, he identifies Dan. He says, Dan shall be a Nahash. Dan shall be a serpent. I'm glad he didn't call me that. Does he not identify Dan as a serpent? Who was the one that rose up in the garden with Chava of Edan? It was a serpent. He uses the word Nahash. He said, Dan shall be a serpent. Was not and did not the serpent try to destroy those that rode on the pure Torah of Yah? Does he not identify Dan as a serpent? He said, Dan shall be Nahash, he shall be a serpent. He shall be a serpent. Now I want you to see where he is positioned. He said, Dan shall be a serpent by the way. And that is what the Torah is called uh, Derech Ha, Derech Ha or the way. It is the way. We go back to the old way or to the old path. He said that Dan, the spirit of Nahash, that shall come out of Dan, he shall be the one in the way. He shall be the one in the way of the Torah. It is your Nahash that stands in the way of the faithfulness of the Torah. I'm going to break it down, Yisrael. And show you one of the first things that come out of the loin of the seed of Dan. Just glad that Yah's going to take away our sin. We have Danites in here. I'm glad that Yah makes it simple to me. I'm so glad. All of these mysteries that men do not know how to reveal, that's the truth. They can talk on the same little old things. Yachahan didn't talk like the stripes. You're sure they didn't teach what they taught. He said, Dad, shall be the Nahash. He shall be the serpent. He shall be this vile thing. Dan shall be this vile thing, this serpent. He shall be in the way. He shall be a shifophone. He shall be an antler, a snake. He says in the orik, in the path. Is not the Torah the light unto the pathway of our lives? He shall be an adler. He shall be the one that discourages you. He shall be the one that try to destroy you. He shall be the one that destroys your heart. The Torah is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto the pathway, Yisrael. And there shall Nachash, shall Dan, the spirit of Dan, stand in the way. I'm going to break it down. I was hungry this morning. By I didn't eat enough yesterday. I like to have enough on Friday. And on Shabbat, I'm not hungry. 
I was hungry. My gut was so I said, what's wrong? I'm hungry. And I can't eat before I preach. I just can't eat before I come to service. Okay, what did I can't do? It. But yet Yah has given me bread, the lesson. Yeah, sure. I feel all right now. Feel all right in my nephesh. Feel all right. Got the fire of Yahweh burning in my nephesh. Got the fire of Yah burning in my nephesh. Come on, Israel. Come on, Israel. Come on. Walking in the path of Yah, waiting on the promise of Yah. Walking in the path of Yah, waiting on the promises of Yah. I will wait, wait on Yah. Oh, I'll wait on Yah. I will wait in the path of Yah, waiting on Yah. Oh, I waited on Yah. Wait, wait, wait on ya. Oh, I'm wait, waiting on ya. How about that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to what the Torah says. He shall be an antler in the path. And this is what he shall do. He shall no shak. He shall bite. He shall strike with a sting. Now, we must align Torah up to understand this. He shall bite the horse's ahab or the heel, so that the rider shall fall backwards. Who is he that rideth from Bozra with his garment tied? The redness of the stains of crimson. Who is he that rides? There's only one. That's what dad is there. To destroy the call of the rider. Yeshua HaMashiach. To fall backwards. But he can't go back. That's all right. He couldn't go back once he was birthed. He had to finish the job and then he finished the business. He is in the path then. That is what Nahash is. To try to throw Yeshua. Or you take a backwards turn. No, I'm not going back. I ain't going back on ya. I ain't going back on ya. I a looking forward to that day, the day of ya. I ain't not going back on ya. I ain't not going back on ya. Come on, I make it plain. Here's this one sits in the path, the way of ya. To bite the horse's foot. He shall come on the loban, not what we call white. It's whiter than their bonnets, you understand? Yeah. Not this false one that comes riding on the white horse, all right? This one ain't riding on no house like that, as though for no house like that. He shall bite the rider's foot, or the horse's foot. Hear this. And his rider shall fall backwards. He says in verse 18, I have chava, I have desire with great expectation, my tegva. I have waited for your Yahshua, O oh Yah. It says salvation, doesn't it? He said, but I've waited for you, Yahshua. And the Chasha, as we ride in Torah, it, he causes us to fall backwards. But I'm waiting for Yahshua because he's going to be in the way to try to bite the rider's foot. And Yah says, Dan, you are repugnant. This is what his father told him. This is what his father is. Isn't that amazing? Because most fathers won't tell their sons, you're a repugnant, wicked pig. They won't tell their daughters, your little filthy little Jezebel. But he said, Dad, I'm telling you, this is your plot in life. I'm telling you that you're going to be in the way. You're going to try to, con you're going to try to pollute the way of Yah. You're going to try to destroy it. And out of that, the temple of hell shall be raised up among you. Uh, and yet a boy shall cause the temple of darkness to rise up in you because the spirit is in you. Uh, and you're going to receive that. Uh, and you're going to allow it to be placed there because you want to try to bite that. Uh, the horse is healed to cause uh, the rider to fall backwards. Uh, and so we do wait, we do wait, we take far, uh, we hope. Uh, yes, send your Yeshua, send your salvation unto Yisrael. 
And this is one of the components why Dan is not mentioning in the book uh, uh, of Gilead now because uh, the insidious wickedness uh, of his nature's mind. Uh, you better make sure your name is not blotted out. Uh, yeah. No curse will cause your name to, to be blotted out. Uh, it is this devious, wicked mindset of yours, uh, this self righteous motive uh, that you think you have something you don't have a damn thing uh, because you will see the power of any man, any woman uh, in their poneme, in the power of their facial expression, uh, in their labor, and well, you will see that. Uh. Yeah. It is about the faithfulness of one. Oh, a man's fruit will speak for him. A man that got a gift, his gift will make room for him. You don't have to tell nobody what your gift is. It will make room because others will say, there's something about that man. He got something. I will go ahead. He got something that other men don't have. He got some gifts in him. You don't have to say anything. A man's gift will make room for him. You don't have to tell nobody you're a mighty preacher. I can preach you. You don't have to tell nobody that. A man's gift, he will make room. You say, man, I, I want to hear him preach, man. Let's let him talk. And that's the truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He shall be the one that's in the path of Yah. That is what Nachash is. That is the spirit of Don. But there's something that is profound that utters out of him. You know what it is? I'm going to tell you. Jokhen Yaramaya makes you nervous because you don't know what he's talking about. I'm going to tell you. You don't have to answer me. I like for the Torah to answer me, all right? How about that? You don't know, neither do you. Hallelujah. Well, you know, he's going to turn away from the word. This is how people answer so general. They give you a general assessment. No. My brother, we agree to disagree. No, you're a coward if you agree with someone to disagree. I don't agree with you, man. Period. You're wrong. How about that? Those that were elders in the days, they would tell you, you're wrong, you're flat out wrong, you're silly, shut up. Today, we don't do that. Well, let's hear him. Now, you don't hear everything that everyone says. I don't. I don't give my ears all that foolishness of entertainment. You think I want to go on the internet uh, and look at some news clip where faggots out parading and, and say we're, we're, we're humans. I don't want to see that filth. You think I will allow that to soil my mind? I won't look at that. You think I want to read just the gay movement? That you, I, I'm not going to put that in my mind. I don't read filth like that. You can. I don't. Well, I, I want to be abreast of things. You don't have to. You just look at you and be abreast of what wickedness is. Your wickedness. Your unfaithfulness. You're faithful to do that, but you're not faithful to Yah. You're faithful with YouTube and DoTube and BooTube and MySpace and CrackSpace, but you're not faithful to Yah. You're sick in your damn mind. You can say what you want to. And I don't care if you don't love me. Listen to this. We wait on your salvation. We wait on the beauty of your hallelujah. But in the same book of uh, uh, Genesis, Bereshit chapter 3. I want to show you what it says here now. I want you to, I know you may not mark things in your book. But what it says, uh, here what it says. And the serpent shall that bites the horse's heel. Just on the line that. And remind yourself of that. But I want to show you in the beginning this was prophesied. And out of that spirit of Nahash shall rise in the sons of Dan. And out of that shall be this anti-Hamashiach that shall rise up in the spirit. It was prophesied. And uh, Yaakov, because uh, his name is Yisra'ya, means that Yah, the power of Yah, prevails in you. Uh, it was in that sea. Was he not a supplanter? Did he not supplant his Ark? Did not Yah, his foreknowledge, he knew all things? Did not Yah suffer? It was not his will, but he suffered things just like he suffered with us. Look what it says in Genesis chapter 3 verse 14. It talks about this identity of Nahash, the serpent. He is cursed. It is the nature of Dan. And Yah says, just like I give no power to the credence of Satan, Hashatan. That's why he's given us power to tread upon the serpents, upon the head, to destroy upon the head of the serpent. It is not the devil making you do things. It's your own wickedness. It's your defiance of Torah. It's your own weaknesses. It says in Genesis 3.14. And Yah said unto Nahash. The same word. The same rendition. The same serpent as Dan. He said unto the serpent. Because you have done this. You have caused the spirit of Nahash to rise up. He says you are a ra. Yah says you are cursed. He declared the enemy of hell to be detestable. You are vile. You are a thing that... 
You shall speak evil upon it. Evil shall pursue you all of your life. He said, you'll curse above all cattle and above the beasts of the field. And upon your gahon, your belly, shall you go. And the dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Listen. Yah says that I will put enmity or Abba, I will put a pure hatred. I will put a hatred that is so pronounced and so strange between you and the woman. Now listen, Yisrael. He says that between your zira and her seed, between the seed of Yah and between the seed of darkness, he said it shall bruise your head and you shall shoof, you shall strike, you shall bite his heel. It is Yahshua that brings the tidings of Yah and the Tav Bizurak, the news of the hope of the Tikva of Yah. It is Yahshua that brings that. And this is the nature of Hashatan. He shall be in the way. Shall be in the way. And he shall bite the heel. And that's what Hashatan. He shall bruise the heel. He shall bruise the Abba. The same wording. And out of Dan shall arise this one, this nature. Out of Dan shall arise this vile thing of great wickedness. Of great wickedness. And you find that he shall be in the way. Was not this serpent in the way? Was he not in the way when Yah spoke unto Hava? You don't have to say, oh man, it's still the truth. It's still the truth. You don't have to concur. I know what I'm talking about. Was not this serpent in the way? Were both serpents in the way? Was this serpent in the way? Did he not make the garden of Adan to be a place whereby his great beauty shall refresh and resonate that place? Did he not do that? Was this one in the way? And shall not even Yahshua bruise his head? And he shall strike or shoof, he shall bite his heel. No, they're not going to teach you this in the Christian home. They got their sermon eyes, sermon ads, take a few scriptures and they just talk. Yeah, you talk. I talk, Yisraya. But there is a proponents of evidence in Torah that I read to us. I don't have the skill like these Uggs, I hate it all them, how proficient they are to read. I don't have that. Because I get too animated. They don't get as animated as me. I just get animated. I've always preached like that. I just get animated. I get carried away. You understand? So it is the same as even the spirit that Yaakov knew what shall arise out of his loin because he knew what had come out of Yeshach's loin, Yeskel, his father, that he was a supplanter. And so as this one was in the way, the serpent, Dan, so was the serpent, uh, Hashatan, in the way, uh, in the way, uh, to bruise the riders or to strike at the heel. He came, Yah's coming to stamp out, is he not? The residue. uh, So when you stamp or stomp on, do you use your heel? uh? Do you use that heel? Do you stomp like this? Is that how you stomp? Huh? You stamp out, don't you? Yeah, and this Nahas is going to try to bruise the heel of Yah. That's what it's going to do. See, that's what Yah's trying to do is to stamp out, to stomp out the wickedness in us. And we allow the Ruach of Nahas to bruise Yah's heel, Yisra'ya. We're trying to bruise the heel of Yahshua to tell him to go back on us, to go back. He said, that's it. I, I, I'm not pursuing them anyway. But Yah's going to stamp out the residue of the wicked. He's going to stomp them down to hell. That's what he's going to do. And that's a fact, Yisra'ya. We need to have line upon line, line precept. We need to have it all. Uh, we need to have men that labor to study, to show themselves to prove unto Yah that He will advance them, that they will speak before the nation and speak truth. I don't care if it's just us little few here today. Uh, do we have anyone listening today or watching on the live stream? Uh, uh, give me some numbers with your hands. Hallelujah. It makes me no difference. I'm not concerned about that. I preach like this uh, when it was nobody but us two. And when she came along, uh, I have to change one thing at all. I just wasn't as, uh, uh, I was more ignorant then than I am now. Hallelujah. All those people that will fill this house here. And I'm not going to change anything for any of them. You know what, y'all, I went naked. I would sell everything to give y'all an offering in all of my ignorance. I sold cars. I walked to work. I would have a damn Damn, my electricity, but I was not going to hold back on Yah. I didn't do that. 
And so that's why I'm able to give everything. I have nothing today. So I don't treasure things like that. I don't treasure nothing. Some damn clothes or watch, it means nothing to me. I don't treasure nothing like that. I treasure one thing that's truth. That shall be the rider that he says that Dan shall be uh, the one that is in the way. Uh, that shall bite the very hoof of the riders of the horse. And, uh, for you to understand the rider of the horse, you got to understand what Revelation says about that. And what's uh, yes, and what's uh, Yeremiah. It's in the book. Hallelujah. I'm glad the way you bring this out, man. Is it making sense, son? I'm glad. I like the way you bring it out, man. You boast, and I do that to infuriate the devil. I got enemies listening to me today. So I do it to infuriate the devil. Get mad at me, fool. Glad to have you. And the thing of it is, they cannot, they cannot override or they, they can't even teach nothing even parallel to this. Do you understand? You both should know. I know I got something that you don't have. What? I got the will to hear truth. That's it. I may not can speak it like you, but I got the will to hear it. That's what he says. He says, so bruise, he shall bruise, he shall bruise your heel. Same expression. The horse rider, he wants to fall back because the serpent is in the way. And that's Dan. That's Dan. As Yeroboam, he set up his temples of darkness in Dan. He set it up in the bosom of Dan. He used Bethel to represent the very house of Yah. We are the body. We are the pieces of Yah. We are the joints. We are the master pieces of Yah's house. Scattered throughout the nation. Those that have joined us, all Yisrael, Yah, those that will hear this. We are, the, we are the building blocks. And every piece is precious, Yisrael, Yah. Every piece. And so with the serpent of the spirit of Nahash, you're not going to be able to buy or sell without this nature of Nahash. And I will show you what it's going to produce, Yisraya. All right, can I go a little farther? Let, let me show you something else, all right, in the book of Leviticus. Now, I've spoken, these are, these are three books of the Torah that I've used. I want to, one more to give us some kind of solidity, all right, to solidify. I'm not going to finish today. I want to get this part, and then I will show you what shall manifest and why Dan is not there, and how Yah, as he said, he's going to draw his people, his tribe, from all of the nations where he has scattered them. Dan has not lost his heritage. He has not. And the only way men can teach this is by some of the writing of some corrupt theologian. And the only thing you got to do is study the book. But you can't do this sitting around eating jelly rolls and cookie crumbs, I'm telling you. You can't do this by worrying about getting sleep. You got to kick your heels up and, and look and dig and you got to get up early in the morning. I didn't even want to teach this. I really did not. The whole reason I'm doing this is because my Ach Mikai is, oh, I, I want you to teach that. Please, Ray. I can say, oh, Mikai, I, I got a message I wrote on this years ago. Just never taught it because it, it, everything is necessary. But what we need to do is get our hearts clean. We won't even comprehend a teaching like this until our minds are made right. It doesn't mean a damn thing. You go out and try to talk it like me. You can't talk it like that. You try to express it. You can't express it like that. Listen to this. May I read, Father? It says here in Leviticus. Now, Yah is so precise to identify the subjects here. Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus 24. I want you to turn quickly. Leviticus 24. And I want to begin reading here at this particular verse, verse 10. Listen to this now. Now, this is the Torah of blasphemy. When one speaks against Yah, they shall be stoned, they shall be killed. Yah identify all the culprits here out of the tribe of Dan. Danites. It says in way, Yira Leviticus 24, 10, it says, And the son of a Yisraelitish woman, whose father was a Mitzri, a man of Egyptian, went out among the children of Yisraelah. And his son, and the son of the Yisraelitish woman, she is not done of the seed of a Yisraelitish woman, she is. Is he not the child of Yah? She is. Look at this now. And the Yisraelitish woman, a man of Yisraelia, strove the Nasa, they struggled together in the camp. In verse 11, it says this. 
And the Israelite, in the Israelitish woman, son, he began to knock up. He began to express his venomous detest for Yah. He began to blaspheme. It says he blasphemed the name, the name of Almighty Yahweh. And he kala, he cursed. He made the name of Yah despicable with the damn Jesus and their damn gods. And they brought him to Moshe. And his mother's name was Shilometh. The daughter of Debri. She was of the tribe of Dan. The power of that spirit out of the bosom of the tribe of Dan. Everything is important what Yah says. We don't labor to understand. We don't. You know. That's why I love Evangelist Hartsfield so much because that's why I brought that first of all to us. He would always tell me, he would say to me, brother, Yah is going to save all Israel. Yah, he's already delivered them. If there's one thing that he constantly poured into me, it was that what uh, Romeo says, 11. In many translations, he's going to deliver. Same word, Yahshua. Save, deliver. And what I thought about that this morning in reference to the Danites, I was taken back to that. The Yah says he's going to save all his children. He's going to save the residue. We don't see how because our ways are not his ways. As far as the heavens are from the earth, so are our ways and our thoughts from the ways and the thoughts of Yah. That's how different they are. And what you may think that it's not the appropriate channel for you to use, it is. And so this woman that was of the tribe of Dan is so distinct here that that must be identified. And the spirit of Nahat, of blasphemy, rolled out of his mouth. And he blasphemed the name of Yah. He cursed, he kalah. He said the name of Yah is despicable, it's detestable, it's vile. The Torah of Yah has no meaning at all. Does the Torah identify him? A Danite, did it not? Oh, that's what it says. That's what it says, doesn't it? Is it all coming together much better now? Sometimes you got to start at the end in order to understand. I want to start deeper than this. But I knew we would lose emphasis as to what I was teaching. And there are those that are listening. They would say, well, what, I, you know, we, we expect to get somewhere without preparing to get there. I'm not using the proper protocol, but I will go back next week and begin at a different place. And to show you how all this fit in together. I want to open your ears up today to show you that this or... Don being missing or his name being omitted and there is another name you'll say a strive for him in the renewed or the Brit Hadassah why is that but is Dan an outcast unto Yisra'ya if that's the case then we all are because we all have sinned we've all have come short of the expectations of Yah and his honor we all have I like strong men I like strong men. strong women too Husband did with your wife according to knowledge, knowing that she is the weak of ass. Uh, all right. But she can be strong in the principles of Yah that he commands her. Hallelujah. It says that this woman's son began to curse Yah's name. The spirit began to emanate out of this Danite mind. Does it say that? All right. Can I go a little further? It says that. You sure it says that? I'll read that again. Hallelujah. When they brought this one in unto Moshe, in verse 11, if they brought him to Moshe and his mother's name was Shulameth, her name means peaceful. She was the daughter of Dibri, which is my word, Yah says. She represents my Torah. Of the tribe of Don, of the tribe of Dean, the ones that judge in a corrupt manner. That's why Yeroboam picked those of the tribes of Evandan to be his priests. 
Because he knew that judgment would be with contention. They will not say we're doing wrong. We need to go to Yerushalayim. What you have done here, Yerubo'am, is wrong. He did not want the house to be united. It's two. That's what the two golden calves represent. They both have been given over unto pagan and wicked practices. Yehuda, Benjamin, and also the other ten northern tribes have been given unto wickedness. The only time that the whole house was one, you know when? That was one of the most vilest of atrocities that took place, wasn't it? When Daiwi should have been out making war, he was looking at Uriah's wife. And the whole spirit of Horam is permeated among Yisra'ah. And under his reign, he was able to bring the house together. He was. And Shalomo, he caused the divide in there with the hard labor. And then Yeroboam uh, uh, and Reboam, they caused the tribes to split. And they've never been a whole house as well. That's why you got two opinions today. You got those opinions that want to follow the damn Lord God Jesus, uh, this vile beast of hell. Uh, and you got those that want to follow their own God, which is not, yeah. And they hope between two opinions. That's what it is, Israel. Yeah. Everyone is not wise. Everyone is not great. Everyone is not strong. Every man 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 is not strong physically. Every man is not strong mentally. Every man is not strong spiritually. Every man is not strong. You find a man that is physically strong is because he has a mental... You, you know, even when you can't do it, when a man has a mental strength, he can, he can do it, man. I don't care what it is. You got to have the mental tenacity and the strength to bind you and to reduce you down to nothing in order to accomplish that which God commands you to do it. So you can say what you want to. You can talk to talk all you want to. Uh, you will know what a man got a strong mental sense because he is strong. Uh, I don't give a damn if he's 70 years old. Bishop Banks, he died the day he died. Uh, he died. Uh, he was a strong oak tree. Uh, he was having an oak tree. Uh, he said, but only y'all can bring down the oak tree. And y'all broke him down. 13 days he died. Yeah. And the old man, I've never heard a man that could quote Torah, scriptures the way he quoted the Ketuv. No other man. He knew them. He had learned them. He had took time to learn. If the old man could bring it together right to. He could. We were ignorant back then. We all were ignorant and we still are. Aren't you glad? I'm glad. I don't want to be satish. I don't want to be sakhal. I don't want to be. I don't want to be sakhal. Let me be ignorant, y'all. Hallelujah. At one time, y'all went to that English. Ignorance. Now he called all men to repent. He called men all, everywhere to repent. So yesterday he went to my anger. He said, boy, repent. At the day he'll say, boy, I need to put a stick on your butt, but repent. That's what he calls me to do to make sure. Jump down, turn around, pick a bell of cotton. Jump down, turn around, pick a bell of day. We used to sing that when I was in school. You may have sang something more filthy. We would sing that. They taught us those kinds of songs. They didn't teach you all that. In South Carolina, we learned that. We learned that in South Carolina, not South, not South Carolina, but South Carolina. You understand? We learned that. What was that? Oh, John, oh, what? Oh, what? Pick a bell of cotton. Oh, David, pick a bell of day. We had fun. Jump down, turn around, pick a bell of cotton. Jump down, turn around, pick a bell of day. Oh. David, pick a bell of cotton. Oh, David, pick a bell of day. I was a cotton picker. I could pick. I could pick cotton. I was bad to the bone. And I took thrill in filling that burlap sack up. Little old boy, that thing way behind me. I get that rope up like that. And I pull that thing. When it got heavy, I just drag it and pick that cotton. Hallelujah. I should love doing it. Old brother said, when I get old enough, I was getting out of here. I was ain't going to pick no cotton. My mom said, not my mother, my mom said, boys, I don't want you to pick cotton all your life. I'm going to the cities, come back with the baby, but I was getting you all out of here. Probably one of the worst things she did, look at her children now. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it says, by the sweat of your poor name. Even as a young boy, I took great honor in doing that because I knew the purpose of it. Granny was going to get those, that 50 cents or whatever. I wasn't dumb even as a kid like that. 
I knew it was going to help the house. And I would pick cotton. It was not the issue of the hard work because that didn't bother me. Hard work has never bothered me. What a man doesn't work, he doesn't work out his nephew's salvation with the fear of Yah. Man got to work, Yisrael. Get that poison out of you. That's what you need to do. You don't have to exercise if you work. Hallelujah. I want to get a little farther before I close today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can see here in Leviticus, we hear 24, 11, whereby the spirit rises up, the spirit of blasphemy that rises up out of the heart of the Danite, the one of that tribe, her son. It did not come out of Levi or Benjamin. It came out of the Danite, that tribe. He is the one that shall be in the way, in the path. That shall strike the hoof of the rider. We'll get into the rider and all of that, Israel. No man is going to be able to buy this truth or sell. You're not going to be able to get, it's, going, it's not going to redeem you. Unless you have Nahash and you think that this sense of satisfaction, that the wickedness of your own doings are going to give you some kind of sense of, uh, of escape. Just like in these whole houses, they can be the most wickedest. They can live like dogs all of their lives. And he accepted the Lord at an early age, at age seven, not seven, but seven. He accepted the loud God. And he went on to John Smith's high school, graduated. And then he worked for Long Shoreman House for 35 years. He was a damn wicked man. He was a drunkard, a drug fiend. He was a wife abuser. He beat his wife. He, he did not even take care of his children. We're going to miss our precious brother John, Joe John, uh, Dickie James, uh, Francis Darrell, David. Uh, he was a wicked man. He was a filthy man. He was a dirty dog. He defied Yah. He was wicked. He accepted the Lord God of the early years. I want to preach on that. Uh, like a Shamulia. With his mama said, I give him dear and let him serve the love. Mama. Ah, he served the love when he was seven. He said, I'm going to walk with the love. And got this, this false damn crying of lies. I'm real, Yisrael. I'm not a damn lie and a false one. Nah, he was a damn drunkard. He was a homemonger. Babies everywhere didn't dig him. Um, he lied. He stole. He robbed. He was a gam. He defied the tour of Yah. He said, damn the ship out of Yah. But he loved a whole Sunday. We're taking him to the God that's been built in his own damn mind. We're taking him to the God that his mama built, the God of lies. The Baptist God, the Methodist God, your black God, your damn dirty white God, your Polish God. How about that? They lied to the people. I tell you something, son. I remember as a young, stupid, ignorant man. My cousin, he stole a car. March 11, 1978. They woke me up that morning about five and said, he's dead. He tried to outrun the police. He hit a tree and he died. He died when his mother got to the hospital and said, I love you. He died. He gave up his spirit. And I remember talking to his oldest brother. I was ignorant. I had no tact. I still don't have no tact. And I remember saying this. I said, the boy went to hell. And he's, gonna, he's going to wake up in the darkness of his delusion of darkness. That man took a brick, and we were having it hard, too. He took a brick and knocked my car window out. Knocked it out. I said, oh, I don't, 
I couldn't get to work. I needed. Back then, to go to the junkyard to get a window, cost you $35. He knocked my window out. And I was ready to go up in him and plow him into hell because I could have. And all of my ignorance, I said, okay, that's all right, yeah, I'll leave it alone. Didn't press no charges, anything against him. He's the one whose brother killed him. That's what he did to me because I told him the truth. I said, he died wickedly. He died in his drug stupor. He was a liar. He's not going to get it right like, I've never believed that lie. You can say, oh, quote, Lord Jesus, save me. I'm saved and died. No. I didn't believe that lie, and he knocked my window out of my vehicle. And I'm not going to tell you a lie and said I wasn't ready to ride up in him with, with some TNT, because I was right then, getting healthy and strong and running. I was right. And I could have broke his head, but I said, no. And don't you know my kin folks, they, 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 in matters like that, they would come against me and say I was wrong. I said, you folks are crazy. Go on. You people are crazy. That's what I'm telling you. You all are nuts. It didn't bother me. I, I wasn't sad. I said, oh, I wish I, they don't invite me to nothing. They won't be around me. I wasn't sad. I said, you Negroes are flat out crazy. Get out of my face. And I would not even go in their presence for periods of time. And then what I did, I walked in and said, how you all doing? I would walk into my mother's house just like this and say, how you doing? Say, how you doing? You feel all right? Oh, yes, okay. Everything's all right? All right, okay then, I'll see you. Bye. Oh, you're going? I said, yeah, just, just, I'm going, bye. That's how I would do it. I wouldn't stay. I couldn't do it. That's how I would do it. Well, we going to have a big dinner tomorrow. No, you all have it. I'm not coming. Why? Because I'm not going to come and make someone feel discomfortable. Because I won't be comfortable in the midst of it. Not me. I'm not going to sit down at the table of the wicked that defies my Abba and hates him and enjoy their feast of wickedness. You can. I won't. I want to read a few more verses here before I close. It's vitally, I want to read this and I'm going to close. Verse 12, it says this. Look what they did now after they saw the spirit of blasphemy. It says, and they put him in jail in the wards uh, that the theft, the mind of Yah, might be shown to them. So they put him in, in the ward. And they waited for Yah to speak, did they not? That the mind of Yah, I have taught that message before, I know I have. The mind of Yah, that his mind may be known in this matter. We got to shut out that wickedness that the mind of Yah may be revealed unto us, Yisrael. They put him in the war that the mind of Yah may be made known. I'm going to stop right there. And that's the reason because I want to teach on the spirit that rose up out of this, out of the nature of the Danites. The spirit of blasphemy. The spirit that is enmity against Yah and hates Yah. I'm going to stop there for that reason. Because I want to go to the depths of this on next Shabbat. And then the next Shabbat finish it up. Because that's too much. We got to get in a hurry. That's too much for us to comprehend and to learn. We need to do it. We need to, we need to be on an expeditious type of charter to hear. And when we hear it, we must obey it, Yisrael. They shut him up. That the mind of Yah may be made known. We need to shut ourselves up. That Yah's mind may be made known. And his mind. And the Zachin, the elders of Yah, they sought Yah Moshe. And when Moshe brought the message, kill the bastard, get this out of the camp. Stone him. And they stone him to death. Don't let that spirit among you, Yisra'ya, stone it. You get together and rise up against it. If I die today, don't let it in the mist. You young men, you stay strong. And you show the sure sign of your strength is this. Can I tell you the sure sign of your strength? You have confidence in one another. That's what the enemy comes to break your confidence. You have confidence in one another. That's how you know you got a sure sign of strength. That you don't distrust or mistrust one another. 
You can see the fruit of your ark and you know what he fell, but that's all right. You all not fall. You may not fall. Uh, the word not fall just means fall in the sin. It means fall and prostrate. The word not fall means this as well too, my Zaki. It means to die prematurely. So it has many indications depending on how y'all uses it. So that's a true sign of strength. That you got confidence in Gisraya. And then when a brother sin, you tell him his sins. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't be shallow about doing it. You don't allow him, you tell him his sin. Well, I ain't no love for you, hawk, you fat pig. How are you going to tell me I don't have no love when, you, when you're 300 some pounds, you're big as a dog, you're greedy as a pig, you have no self-control, you're going to tell me. Uh, you don't know what love is because if you love yourself, you will not even, you will not even brutalize yourself like that. Beast gonna stand here and say, Well, I don't feel no love here. The first time I've got sick, you you eating like a damn hog. That's why you've gotten sick. It's amazing. You go out there to the restaurants and eat everything, and all of a sudden you get sick here. You eat your damn chips, your cookies, and all of that mess, and all of a sudden you get sick. Get out of here, man. Get off these grounds. And I put him off too. You gave me that money to buy me off. I said, Then you're a cheap whore then. I told him, just like I said, you're a cheap whore. Jackass. You're cheap. $260 buy you off. You couldn't buy me off with that. You couldn't buy me off with $2.6 million. See, with that family won $260, they what, $298 million? I said to myself, I said, these folks are nutty. I say, that, that, that payoff is coming in the Midwest, someone like Missouri. I know what was coming. I know how they scattered it around. I say, folks in North Carolina, they can forget that. I say, that's coming from Missouri and out there. It was in Missouri and Phoenix. The other, other ticket was sold in They know where they put the tickets. They know exactly where the lot of ticket is. It wasn't coming to South Carolina. It just make folks, just, they, they, they was incest with everybody. If they gave away 500 million, how much do you think the folks spent? 2.6 billion. That's so damn stupid. I would not in, put y'all to that kind of indignity to say that I'm trying to I'm trusting in the God troop or many to get some money that I can live this way. I don't want to live that way. May the riches of Yah rest upon you, Yisrael. Be encouraged. We're going to get the devil's head. And I'm not stopping for nobody. Hallelujah. I'm not stopping. I've met too many false ones that I know the real ones when I meet them. Do you understand? I met too many false ones. Say they love me. I know the real ones when they come. Hallelujah. May ya brak you Come on, our Zakin. May bless you all this Shabbat. May keep kol Yisraya. May his strength rest upon you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, we do Barak Yahweh for you all. Those are listening by via live stream. Those of you that have gathered here, we all are Eka. We're all one big family, Israel. Hallelujah. And Yahweh knows what it takes for us to be drawn together. Not separated. Not dispersed. But he wants us all in one mind. And this is what it takes for the house. It takes the preaching. The foolishness of the preaching. It takes the reproof. It takes the reproof. The exaltation of Yahweh's Torah. Why? That Yahweh may bring us all into his bayat. That we be one vessel for him, Yisrael. Hallelujah for, his, for him to pour his ruach upon all of, us, all of us. I do pray that. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For Yahweh, he knows those that are his, Yisrael. Hallelujah. He will not forsake his people or his zira. Almighty Yahweh, we do barak you for this day. You have given us this Shabbaton. For you have fed us today, Yahweh, from the throne. Hallelujah. You have sent your fire down. Upon Yisrael, uh, to get us moving, to move our love, our, our feet, our mind, Yahweh, that we may seek Yahweh your word in death, and that we may understand Yahweh what you are speaking unto the house, and that you only give it unto the house of Yisrael uh, your knowledge. We do pray for those, Yahweh, that have the ailments in their bodies, that you would give them strength, Yahweh, above all things, Abba Yahweh, that you would give them reassurance in their imuna. That, Yahweh, we commend or we give our lives, whatever you have for us, we give our lives unto you, Yahweh, that we trust you with all of our being. And all things we do, Barak, we do ask you to send those 
Back y'all way to the appointed place at the appointed time, y'all way that your mother can be encamped round about them and keep them. In the precious in my name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh, Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak Kol Yisrael. Hallelujah.